Hello, Jeff Zwerink, and welcome again to Give and Take, the segment of our show where we explore interesting and fascinating scientific ideas to help equip you to be able to go share the gospel. Today I'm joined by Hugh Ross, and we are going to discuss how whales impact global warming. Hugh, it's good to have you here again today. Well, thank you. There's part of this that just seems a little incredulous. I mean, how can whales have any sort of real impact on global warming? So can you help unpack that for us a little bit? Well, it is incredulous because whales spew out a lot of carbon dioxide. They're animals, after all, and they're big. And so it was a group of Australian researchers that uh, began to study sperm whales and discovered that uh, they feed on these giant squid. It's the only diet they feed on, and they defecate on the surface. And that the so phyto- presumably the squid are down lower and they're defecation We're talking up at the surface. thousands of feet below the surface is okay. where they feed, but they come up to the surface uh, to breathe and to defecate. Mm-hmm. And that they found that these giant squid were very iron rich. Okay. And that when these sperm whales would defecate, they would emit this soluble iron fluid, which basically fertilized the phytoplankton, which are on the surface of the ocean. Hmm. And so they know that the phytoplankton population was going up because the big mystery was how come with the return of the sperm whales into the oceans, we got more giant squid and they're bigger. So, I mean, why is that surprising? It's surprising because the only uh, uh, predator for the giant squid are the sperm whales. So that is actually fascinating. Yeah, they're being that? eaten by these sperm whales, yet there's more of them and they're bigger. It's okay, so you got the whales, these uh, sperm whales going down deep into the ocean, eating the giant squid, coming up, releasing all the nutrients on the surface of the ocean. So kind of a recycling effect, if you will, or redistributing the nutrients, which does what then? Well, what limits the growth of the phytoplankton in the world's oceans... So phytoplankton is... Zo- uh, that would be like uh, cyanobacteria. Uh, it's the simplest life forms on the face of the earth that engage in photosynthesis. So they're pulling carbon dioxide and water out of the environment and making sugars and starches and fats with so, it. Th- so these are kind of some of the primary producers, if you will. They can just take what's in the environment and make the nutrients that other things are going to eat in some sense. Yeah, they're the base of the food chain. Right. 70% of the Earth's photosynthetic activity are these phytoplankton. Okay. So they're the dominant photosynthetic life forms on the face of the Earth. Mm-hmm. And so here are these uh, sperm whales uh, emitting this iron, which limits how much phytoplankton you got. So the more iron mm-hmm. that these sperm whales put into the ocean, the more phytoplankton you get, which means there's more food for the zooplankton, which means there's so more... So zooplankton... Uh, these are animal plankton. In other words, they, they eat the... Uh, so like krill and things like no, that? No, not krill. Not we're, krill? No, so talking, what are some examples yeah. then? We're talking really... I mean, some of these are basically unicellular life forms okay. that feed on the uh, photosynthetic, uh, you know, uh, cyanobacteria. Okay. And then larger creatures too, mm-hmm. multicellular creatures. Okay. So it explains why the giant squid are, are more numerous and bigger. They got more food to eat. So by eating the giant squid, the whales are actually producing the nutrients that allow more squid to be around. Exactly. By taking away the sperm whales, we collapse the whole ecosystem in the uh, oceans of the earth. And what's brand new, I just wrote a blog article on this, we found the baleen whales, which are actually much more numerous than the sperm whales, Mm -hmm. have a similar impact. Uh, Krill are the second most iron-rich food source in the ocean. Okay. And that's what baleen whales feed on. Mm -hmm. And when they defecate, they release an even more iron-rich substance in the ocean. So that's another big contributor to boosting the population of the phytoplankton, which boosts the population of the entire food chain underneath. And then the net result is even though these whales are breathing out huge quantities of carbon dioxide, because of the way they uh, fertilize uh, the photic zone, the phytoplankton, they actually pull more carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere than what they release by about a three to one ratio. We're a long ways from bringing the whales back to where they were 300 years ago. Mm -hmm. If we were to do that, we would see the fish stocks in the oceans get much greater than they are today, uh-huh. and we'd see much more greenhouse gases being pulled out of the atmosphere. So we, of all people, should be highly motivated. Mm-hmm. Let's bring back the whale populations to what they were. You know, this this seems to harken back to what it talks about in uh, the first chapters of Genesis, where God is telling Adam to, you know, to be fruitful and multiply and r- fill the earth and rule over and subdue it, that there's this aspect of stewardship, that as we care for 
the various animal populations, it actually is a beneficial to humanity that we, by taking care of the planet, we actually take care of ourselves. Well, what you see in Genesis and more explicitly in Job were to manage the planet for our benefit and the benefit of all other life. It's not either or, it's both and. Yeah, I find that a very fascinating uh, conclusion to draw out there, Hugh, and I appreciate your comments. You know, it really is fascinating that when we look at this creation, it is incredibly well designed. But yet, as we look at how the Bible describes our, our relationship to creation, it's very well designed, but God has given us stewardship over it so that we can care for it. And as we care for it well, not only does that benefit humanity, it benefits the rest of the planet as well. You know, I would encourage you to go check out Hugh's article. Go to reasons.org and search for whales and global warming, and you'll get access to an article that will equip you to be able to use this fascinating topic to share the gospel with those around.